What's up guys and welcome back to the Fathead Cycles YouTube channel. Today we're going to be putting a high power plug and play audio system in this 2010 Ultra Limited. Let's get started. First step in this process is let's protect this fender. Put a commercially available fender cover on it, a blanket, something just to make sure that if you drop a screw, a nut, a bolt, the outer fairing, that it doesn't put a dent in the painted fender. Take the three windshield bolts out. Because this bike is a limited, it does have the fog lights, so I'm not worried about the fairing dropping when I get all the screws out. But if you have a street glide, I recommend reinserting the middle screw after you get the windshield out until you get all the bolts out and your windshield comes right out. Got all the bolts out of the inner fairing. We're gonna gently lift up to clear the fog light. And inside, you're going to find your headlight connector. Unplug that. Set your fairing to the side. Now that we're inside the inner fairing, let's go ahead and get everything pulled out before we start putting any new equipment in. We're gonna start pulling the main plug off the radio. Set that to the side. We're gonna disconnect the CB antenna and the plug that goes into the CB antenna. And then we're going to disconnect the second plug off of the head unit and set it aside. There are two Allen bolts hidden on each fairing bracket. The easiest way to get to that is with a 3 16 ball headed Allen while we have our 3 16 Allen in our hand, we're going to loosen the speaker support that goes back to the main fairing support on each side to make the speaker easier to get out. Grab the factory head unit with both hands, wiggle it up and down, and pull it out. If this is the first time the head units ever came out, it may take a little extra pulling. I forgot to unhook the antenna, the AM FM antenna, so we're just gonna pull that out now. All right, now we wanna take the speakers out. You wanna make sure to pay particular attention to the wire color and the terminal color, which one is positive, which, one's, which one is negative. It's labeled on the circuit board. So on this bike, the white connector is positive, the black connector is negative. We're gonna sit those wires out of the way. We're gonna take a T25 Torx bit. For the sake of YouTube, I'm gonna use it on a power drill, but you can use a hand screwdriver yourself, that's fine. remove the entire speaker. The first component that we're gonna be installing from our high power audio bundle are the Rockford Fosgate TMS 6SG. They fit perfectly in the fairing, have a nice custom grill. Instructions, styrofoam, have the speakers with the grill and the hardware that comes with it. It's made to fit directly into the opening. Has a spacer to keep it off the inner fairing. Has factory style spade connectors on the back for an easy plug-in install. We're going to take our new Rockford Fosgate speaker with the terminals facing up and the Rockford Fosgate logo on the bottom. Slide it into the fairing hole. In the hardware pack, they give you four long screws and two short screws. Your two long screws go through the top. Two mounting holes where you remove screws from the factory. Just start those in place, leaving them loose. That way you're able to reposition the speaker. The short screw goes in the bottom hole 
catching the bracket. Tighten all screws up now. Reattach our wiring while we're here. The black was the negative and the white is the positive. If the black terminal is a little loose on the negative terminal, you can squish it down with a pair of pliers to make it have a nice tight fit. Now we're gonna go ahead and unpackage and install the Sony DSX M80 high power head unit. Got some swag for you guys. Microphone if you choose to use it. Fairing spacers in case they're needed for your inner fairing brackets. New screws to attach your radio to your inner fairing brackets in case your factory screws are stripped or messed up. Remote control. Detachable faceplate. And a head unit. Let's get this thing unwrapped. Show you how it comes out of the box. All of our head units come prepackaged in the mounting kit that is going to be needed with the wiring harness that you need already attached to your head unit. After you unwrap your head unit, take your face plate out of the wrapper, snaps in place, make sure you take the time to pull this rubber seal all the way to the leading edge of the face plate on the mounting bracket for a good tight seal. After you get your face plate installed, we're going to very carefully slide the head unit in place. It slides right into the opening and it's still able to be moved. Let's get our screws, get those in the side. I'm gonna go back in with the customer's original screws because they're in good condition. Just like anything else we do, we want to start all four screws before we torque anything down. Now that we have all four screws started, we're gonna verify that we're happy with the position of the head unit on the front of the fairing. And we're gonna tighten everything down. The connection that comes pre-attached to the Sony head unit goes to the connection you pulled off of the left side of your factory radio. If you have an Ultra, make sure you buy the appropriate rear speaker harness adapter for your motorcycle. On our harness, you will see a tag that says rear speaker with a connector on it. You simply slide the two of them together and then the big plug that came off of the right hand side simply plugs in. Now we have power to your rear speakers. We're going to take our factory antenna Plug it into the antenna port on the radio. You will have a blue wire that's left over. It is a remote turn on wire if you add an aftermarket amplifier. You also have a three and a half foot USB connection that you can run wherever you would like on your motorcycle. Because this is an Ultra, it did have a CB. It is not getting retained. So we're just going to tuck this wiring connection out of the way. Let's go ahead get the unit powered up, make sure everything functions properly, make sure that the hand controls pair properly before we do anything else. Gonna turn the bike on, radio comes on, volume goes up, volume goes down, mute, change in stations, change in modes, awesome. Everything seems to be working right at this point. If your hand controls don't pair initially right out of the gate, no worries. 
We include a little instruction sheet on how to manually reset your hand controls. We're not going to clean this up right now. It will be cleaned up before the install is over. Let's get to the back and throw the tour pack speakers in. The last part of our high power bundle that we have left to install is the rear tour pack speakers. Super quick and easy to install it. All you need is a T10 screwdriver or socket. Take out the four retaining screws, speaker pops right out. Set our screws aside, pull the grill off, pull the speaker out, and again, pay attention to your wire color for your polarity. Silver is positive, copper is negative. The speakers that are included in the bundle and is going in the back of this bike is the Rockford TMS-5s. Let's get them opened up, see what comes in the package. Of course, we have instructions, styrofoam packaging, a bag of hardware if you choose to use it, and the speaker and grill for the tour pack. The speaker is a shallow mount speaker, so it is going to drop right in place. It's going to clear all the connections and everything else inside without adding a spacer ring to your tour pack. Copper is negative, silver is positive. Ensure that your Rockford logo is at the bottom, and I like to start a screw through the two top holes so that way the speaker and the grill are aligned properly and then start them into the nut zerts. All right guys, that's it. New Sony DSX-80s in the head unit spot. Rockford Fosgate inner fairing speakers, Rockford Fosgate tour pack speakers. The outer fairing is back on. Reassembly was the exact opposite of disassembly. This customer has an awesome sounding plug and play non-amplified system. If he wants to add an amplifier on later on, super easy to do. This can be completed in your garage in about two hours. Make sure you click on the subscribe button right here so you stay up to date on all of our latest content. Until next time guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the ride.